In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Parallax Serial LCD display with the Arduino. What I have here is the Serial Parallax display. Being a Serial LCD display I can control and send data to this with just really one port. I've got a couple additional wires for power. So I have my display, I've got a breadboard to make my connections to my Arduino. I also have a push button switch that's out of the view of the frame that I'm using to move through my different functions here. So you'll see that with this display I've got this servo cable that's connected to the back running to my breadboard. I've got the ground connected to my Arduino. I've got my plus 5 volts connected to my display as well. And then the signal wire from my servo cable, going to my LCD display, is going over here to port number 1. It is important that this gets connected to a serial port or a port that can do serial communication. On the Mega, there are actually four built-in serial ports. There's this one here that's labeled TX0 and RX0. I'm only going to be using the transmit because I'm only going to be able to send data to the display. I'm not going to be receiving anything back. I also have this TX and RX3, TX2 and RX2, TX1 and RX1. So I have those four built-in serial ports. Using a library, you could also use one of the other ports. And you could use that library then to use that pin to communicate. So to uh, send data to this display, I can use my serial print line or my serial print to send it special codes to do different things like turning the backlight on or off, to position the cursor, to clear the display. I need to send it a byte, and that byte is done sent using the serial write command. So for example, it says here that it's getting ready to clear the display. To clear the display, I need a byte that is equal to a 12, and then using the serial write command, send that via the serial port to the display. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll press the button here. Ready, set, go. Oops, sorry, I bumped the power there. So you see that it cleared it, and I now have my next. Uh, function that's I'll explain in just a little bit. So that clears it. Whatever was currently on the display that would clear it and that was just simply done using that byte that is equal to a 12 and again sent using the serial write. Uh, what I'm trying to show here is that you can use the print line command and this I sent was saying using print line. I immediately followed that with printing again but printing an asterisk. And you see that the asterisk printed at the very beginning of the line. The point that I want to make here is that when you use the print line, serial dot print line or serial two, whatever your port may be, the print line causes the cursor to move back to the beginning of that line and that's where you're going to start printing from. Sometimes that's desirable, sometimes it's not, but you've got to be aware of it. So make sure that if you're printing lines, multiple lines in a row, that you're controlling and aware of the position of where it's going to start printing. You also have to be aware of how many spaces you have available on your display. This has two rows and 16 columns, so if I were to try to print more than 16 characters, it's going to potentially wrap around and not do what I want it to do, so you have to be aware of the length as well. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and push the button again move on to our next function. I did a clear screen. This time I then used just the print, so serial.print, and followed that with printing the asterisk. And you see that it did something a little bit different. Now my asterisk is showing up after my using print. That is because the print leaves the cursor in its last position. In my case it was right after the T. So whenever I then followed it with another print statement, it simply started printing from that particular position. So the print line does a carriage return. It causes it to move back to the beginning of the line. The print does not. It simply stops printing at that particular point. The cursor is already advanced to the next empty spot. So that's the difference between the two. Moving to the next function. You can also do use the print line but you can also manually move the cursor down. 
So I've used my print line, immediately followed it, well, almost immediately, followed it with another uh, print statement. But in between those, I caused it to move down a line, to the next line. And that's done by sending a byte that is equal to a 10, a 1, 0, 10. So I did my print line. After that, it moved to the beginning of that line. My byte that was equal to a 10 moved it down to the next line. I was then able to use print or print line to get my second line of information in there. So that's the difference between print and print line and also using the move cursor down. Here I'm showing that we can actually position text on a line. We could do that a number of ways. You could actually add spaces in front of your hello, in front of your second line to get it there. But you can also position it using commands. So you can send to it the value of the line where you want to start. So you would simply then write to the display using serial write the position. But it doesn't start with one. The first line, first row is actually 128, next one 129, 130, 131, so 132 is where that H is positioned. The second line begins on 148, 149, 150, 151, 152. So I'm positioned in those spots. So you can give it those values, send it those values, and actually position it. Sometimes that use is useful because what you want to do is maybe print the value of something is equal to and then force it to put that value in a very specific spot. So that's where that comes in and, and can be very helpful in creating a meaningful display. Some of the displays have a backlight, so there's actually a light source that is on the other side, and we can control that through the command. So now you can see that the backlight is on. That is done by sending a byte that is equal to a 17. Likewise, we have one that will turn it off. That is done by doing a serial write with the byte equal to an 18. There's also turn back on. There is also one, this wasn't a clear display command, this was not the byte number 12, equal to a 12. This was turning the display off. There's actually um, information being printed to this display, but we're not seeing it. The display is turned off. So it's as though, you know, it's there but made invisible. That's done by turning the display off using a byte equal to a 21. We can also turn the display on, and that's done using a byte that is equal to a 22. And then it simply loops back around to the beginning of my program, getting ready to clear the display. This was actually done with one print statement, knowing that I had um, more than 16 characters to print, you can see that it automatically wrapped to the next line. So I had in between double quotes, getting ready to clear display, and it simply fit that on. I, because I cleared it, it was positioned at the very first row and first column, and then it just happened to work out so that it displayed very nicely. So there's lots that you can do with these LCD displays. They're very good for displaying information that you might try to do using just an LED. Uh, here you can provide some very useful information. Realize that it is using a serial port, so that time that you take to send information to it, depending upon the body rate, depending upon the speed at which you need to be updating in your program, could potentially interrupt the flow uh, so if you're doing some high-speed encoder counts and you're trying to do this as well, that could cause a particular problem. But if it's nothing that is very time-sensitive and high-speed, these certainly work well. And you could have multiple displays. Uh, as I said, this can handle four serial ports uh, without doing anything special, and we could use a software library to make use of even more. So you're certainly not limited to one display, and you're certainly not limited to using a 2x16 display. You can get them in uh, greater length, more columns, and in with more rows.
right, so that's the basics of using a serial LCD display.